Hi, my name is Trolls, and in this video, we're going to look at Anthology Strings user interface. We're going to be taking a look at the browser, the section mixer, all the individual features in the user interface and how to use it. But I'm not going to be playing any musical examples. So if you're curious about what the library actually sounds like, check out all our other videos where we're going through legato and art control and short notes and the solo instruments in the library, the Divisi sections, the full ensembles, all that stuff. It's covered in a variety of the other videos, but in this one, we're purely gonna be focusing on the user interface and how you utilize it and how incredibly intuitive it is. And let's just start from the very top. If you look up here, you can see there's a question mark. And when you click on it, you actually get a full description of all the individual features in the library, including how to use articulation slots, all the individual aspects here, what CC the different controllers are assigned to. Obviously you can assign them to anything you want, but it's a great overview if you ever need a little bit of help in terms of figuring out what is actually happening underneath the hood of the library. All right, so let's get started. Up here, you have our articulation browser. And right now in this example, it's completely empty. And one of the unique aspects about an anthology is how quickly you can build your own custom patches. Let me just show you here. I click here on empty slot and all of a sudden I have access to all their articulations inside of the library. So in this case, let's do some short notes. So I'll take my spiccato feather up here. I'll double click on this one again. I'll take spiccato tapped. I'll click on the next one. Let's say staccato. The next one here, macado. The next one here, pizzicato. And let's do a bar tuck here on the last one. And that's it. The patch is created. Everything is assigned automatically to your key switches down here. And you can see the corresponding key switch number up here as well. If you click on any of the controllers here, you can actually reassign the key switch as well. You can see it's moving up and down, um, down here on the keyboard. Let's just put it back here in its core position, but you can actually assign it to anywhere you want on your keyboard. You can also do it in the other end of the keyboard. So if you have a specific workflow where you prefer your key switches to be in a certain place, it's essentially just clicking here and then moving it around until you have your perfect design. And let me also preface that this video is in real time. So when I click on something here, and let's say I select a legato articulation, it's done, it's already loaded. So this is the perfect way of designing your patches in a very, very fast way. Obviously you can control the volume of each of the individual patches here as well. And if you wanna control them with CCs instead of regular key switches down here, you can click here and you can assign it to any CC that you want as well by clicking this little keyboard here. All right, let's move over here to the right to the section mixer. When we look at it right now, you can see that the basses are highlighted, but the cellos, violas, and violins are not highlighted yet. That means that all these articulations in here are only playing with the basses so far. But let's say that we want a combo ensemble. Let's move the basses a little bit to the right here and combine them with some cellos as well. You can see up here, that obviously the cellos are loaded and we're gonna pan the cellos a little bit as well. And you can pan it, of course, any way you want. Uh, we can also load some violas, for example, and pan them a little bit to the right. And all of a sudden, all these articulations are no longer just playing with basses, but they're also playing with cellos and violas. So it's a very, very neat way of not only loading and unloading stuff, you can actually unload here by clicking these guys here as well. Um, but it's a very quick way of getting a good reference to where we are, how you wanna pan your things. And we thought it would be cool to just add that little map so you always have access to it in case you wanna learn a little more about positioning and you wanna perch load stuff as well. In the middle here, you have all your main articulation controllers. So for example, with a spiccato here, you have expression and speed. You can actually control the tightness of the spiccato by using the speed knob here as well. And in the case of the legato, obviously our legatos are multi-layered. So you got slur and the softer ones, you got normal legato in your normal velocity range. And then you have very fast legato in the sort of upper range of your dynamics. And when you click hard on the keyboard, it gets faster as well. And obviously that's reflected here on the dynamics as well. So you can always see where you are in sort of the dynamical spectrum of the legato. You have expression here as well. You got speed of the legato and this one is really cool. It's super, super useful. When you play faster patches, you sort of want to go up in your speed. When you play a little bit slower, you can go down on it. So it's not just that we have speed control built in the velocities, but you can also control the legato speed here. And obviously each of these guys here come pre-assigned to CCs and you can see them up here by the question mark. We have 1, 11, 16, and we got some vibrato on CC 12. But again, you can actually assign each of these guys by right clicking on them to any CC you want. You can also control the release triggers and obviously you can see the intensity of vibrato here and the volume of legato as well. But as I mentioned, this is dependent on what articulation you're choosing. So obviously for the short notes, it's different. For the legato, it looks different. If we load stuff like, um, let's say a trill, it's gonna have its individual controls here as well. So depending on which articulation you're using, each of these controls uh, have a little bit of a different setup. Down here is our third global section. You have access to a variety of custom convolution impulses that will add a little more reverb to the library. 
These are impulses from some of the places we've recorded over time, cathedrals, churches, all that stuff. We have a variety of more custom spaces down here as well. They're wonderful to use if you want to get a little bit of a different sound to the strings as well. Over here, you got our microphones. Right now, I'm using the mixed microphone articulation. And you can actually assign to different outputs by clicking this guy here and you can load and unload the mics here. And you also got panning down here if you need that. And over here to the right, we have an equalizer. Some people like to manipulate their strings a little more with EQ, depending on what sections you're using, what style and all that stuff. So they can be wonderful in terms of dialing in the type of strings you need for your mix. Maybe you need a little more high in the trailer mix. Maybe you need to take the mids down a little bit for classical stuff. There's a variety of EQ tricks that can help sort of shape your ensemble as well. And last but not least, we also added our chaos effects. So if you click down here on effects, you get access to our chaos module and you have a phaser, a flanger. Again, you got the EQ here. You have a degrader that contains a variety of different options. We have a stereo delay, and then you got two different types of convolutions as it wasn't enough just with the first one here. You actually have more sort of sound design convolutions down here as well if you want to take your strings to a different world. But in essence, that's anthology. And as simple as it may seem, there is so much stuff happening underneath the hood. When it comes to stuff like Legato, for example, for example, we have another video where I'm demonstrating our art control here. And that one has a very, very complicated amount of scripts going on, but it just works. You can control both the dynamic velocity of the arcs, you can control the speed of the arcs, and it just works right on the keyboard. It's absolutely great. So check out the video as well, because it's super intuitive. And the whole concept for Anthology, and this is really the lessons we've learned from Adagio and Agitato, was really to get you back on the keys where the music is happening, try to shorten the distance from your creative thought to your actual creation. And that's really what Anthology is about. It's easy for you and it's complicated for contact. There is so much stuff happening underneath the hood. But this is really our way of thinking about the future of orchestral instruments. We want to take you a little bit away from all the fiddling with use interfaces and different pages and all that stuff. It just needs to feel right and sound right when you play it. And that's what Anthology is about. So anyway, um, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, watch all the other videos we have with Legato and Art Control, Short Notes, Divisi, Solo Instruments, all that stuff. We have so many other ones, but this was just to give you a little bit of an introduction to our user interface. Thanks.